Hello everyone, so this time I would like to share a video on how to create a cozy police jacket using a simple t-shirt as a base. Um, at times expressing the right fleece texture can be a bit tricky, so I will share a few tricks that can help you create more accurate visualizations of fleece items. So let's get to work. First of all, I will add this male t-shirt from um, Clothes Library. I picked the male's one because it already has like a loose silhouette and that's pretty much the silhouette that I want to create as well. So I will fit the avatar's arms to the pose of the t-shirt so it's easier to simulate. Okay, so I already have an idea of what kind of silhouette and look I want. Um, so the first step that I always do is I make sure that I'm using the fabric that is either close to the fabric I want to use or is the exact fabric I want to use for this item. So this time I will use the physical property of this Sherpa fabric. And one thing about this fabric, it's quite stretchy. So um, the form of um, the item gets a little bit um, distorted because of the stretchiness, especially if there is a pocket here um, so I will increase the stretchiness and I will adjust no I will decrease the stretchiness um, by adjusting the physical properties so I will put um, 10 10 I don't even know how to call it, 10 points 10 on top um, so this will make um, the item less stretchy Okay, so now I will adjust the length. I want it to be rather cropped so I can see the waistband like this. Maybe it's too much. So this is just for, um, so this item is just for visualization purpose, so I'm not really putting in specific values or doing like the actual correct pattern making, because of course using 3D there are different purpose how you use it, whether you use it for idea development or checking fit of the pattern, so this basically is just visualization of an idea, so I don't really pay attention much to um, the accuracy of the pattern. So I do things like this, for example, remove the points. Obviously for pattern making, these points are important, um, but I don't really want to deal with these extra points. So I just remove them as well as I will adjust the sewing of the sleeve so that it is easier to um, kind of see the difference between armhole and sleeve um, head length. And of course, I don't need this collar. And I will also add um, the elastic to the neckline because neckline tends to stretch out quite a lot because it's like a bias cut here. So adding that 100 um, ratio elastic helps to prevent the stretch. Okay, so next step, I will increase the length of the sleeve. So I want the sleeve to be a little bit longer and quite voluminous voluminous I don't know if I'm pronouncing this word correctly well basically I want the sleeve to have a nice volume so it's um, kind of cute look okay now I will work on um, the width at the chest because I want the jacket to be quite wide and here is quite interesting difference um, when you move just the line or when you move line and points and I think it's quite um, important for you to know the difference too so this time I will um, move the line and the points so how about extra three centimeter on each side then I also want to move this point for another three centimeter so 
so it should be very very loose and also I want to drop the shoulder let's say by five centimeter okay and let's check And I want to drop this too by three centimeter. I will reduce the height of the sleeve and I will add the extra width. for that actually fits quite well oh no 18 okay so this kind of loose silhouette is what I'm aiming for looks quite okay Maybe I want the sleeve to be... No, I think it's okay. And then the sleeve I will change so that it's much wider. Like this. Okay, I think the overall silhouette is more or less what I wanted. Let me check again the sleeve. That's fine. Okay, and now I will adjust the neckline. Now I will create the collar. So first I should measure that's why I don't really like to work with these because sometimes when you select a line it selects this instead of the line so you get the wrong measurement two to five okay two to five and the height let's say no seven centimeter not right okay and of course arrange and simulate I would like it to be a little bit more curved so I will use this tool fullness line I really like this tool but first I will put some point here to keep this part straight so this tool doesn't work if you merge these two pieces that's why when I create new shapes I usually keep them as separate pieces because otherwise this um, grade function doesn't work let's say this okay looks okay and now I can merge it and now I will create the second layer and then there will be this um, overlap so first of all layer clone under really great function too now remove linked editing and apply half symmetric pattern and I will adjust the sewing change to turned and now I will offset, offset as pattern outline so the little overlap or edge will be um, 1.5 centimeters so first of all I will extend it and this line will be the line that will um, the amount that will fold back so this I will mirror okay and now I will fold it down and do the sewing so this line I will 
sew here and also I will sew this together and of course add the double fold line and this function here is quite new so you can offset internal line to both sides which is very useful at least for me because I always create folds with two fold lines to get a smooth and nice look and also this helps with um, the stability okay and the last step is to sew this end part so I don't do sewing until this middle point just because if you do that there will be a lot of collision issues here um, so it's better to avoid that okay so the color is ready and then the next step is to add binding but I think now is the time to change the pose okay and now as I'm changing the pose I will make sure that um, the simulation is um, kind of pretty So now I can add um, the binding. I will cut and sew the front. Okay. And let's measure the hemline. 56 centimeter. Oop. And let's do 1.2 centimeter. And first, it's kind of rule of thumb. I always start with like 80% of the original width when it comes to bindings and ribs. Well, that's kind of, um, yeah, the first, but not, of course, not always it fits. Not fits, but not always the look is exactly what I wanted. and I also need to create the material for binding um, so I usually start with hard, uh, trim hardware and then I increase I decrease the stretchiness and decrease the bend, bendiness is that, that, that the correct word? bendiness no idea well, you see the look is quite different already but I think it might be too loose, so I will decrease it by another 10%. Okay. And here is one tip um, that I can share. So usually when you sew something to binding, um, it kind of it doesn't bend. It doesn't create like a nice bend because the software is trying to keep like that flat simulation here um, but if you select the sewing lines you can reduce the fold strength to zero and then the software will allow this part to bend naturally now I have pretty big mesh size so you can't really see the difference but overall it it is a good thing to use I think And now I will create for the, um, for the cuff. So here I think I can already put like 25 centimeter. The 
this is always annoying me. It should be side. Yeah. Okay. That's good. And of course, adjust the good old finger. I usually move it more closer. Because otherwise it's messing with my simulation. Okay, and also this, okay, it already has binding, so I think I need to make it more tight. So it stays on the wrist. Of course you can measure the wrist and everything, but sometimes I don't really want to do this, so do it, so I just do it like this. Okay, and here is the same, but this time I will put this on a lower particle distance so you can see the difference. So you can see how it, it is kind of forced to stand up. And then if you reduce it, it allows to fall. Yeah. Well, of course, depends on what kind of look you want. Maybe it's not necessary, but I do really like to um, use this function. And this is more or less the look of the sleeve that I want with nice... Um, nice folds like this so I will add some pins to kind of fold otherwise it will just fall drip down yeah this is more or less the look that I I'm looking forward to create okay And of course, I don't want to struggle with the other sleeve and try to make the same simulation, so I simply copy and paste. And this is one of seriously the greatest functions. I've saved so much time. So I'll have to lift this up. Anyway, fine tuning I will do off this video um, but yeah so this is kind of the look and now I will add the zipper in so I will not use the zipper function but I will create a pattern piece so 495 let's say 49 and let's do 12 oh no 495 and 12 and I will cut it in half. Cut and sew and apply symmetric pattern with sewing. And do the sewing. And this. create a new fabric called zipper and it's fine to use the same physical properties as the binding okay and before simulation I have to delete this okay beautiful the look is quite nice very close to what I imagined the drop is okay okay and then I think now um, I will put everything on particle distance 10 and let's start um, talking about the fleece expression oh another thing 
I need to create a pocket. So first, I always like to start with like a set measurement. Oh, ah, this is new keyboard. I really can't use it well yet. So I always start with 13 times 13 centimeter and then I adjust it from there. Maybe I take one centimeter from the width and then I want to add this point and kind of drop by 1.5 centimeter and maybe reduce the height for 1.5. I think this this very popular um, item this fall winter season like the fleece jacket I think also last year it was quite popular this fleece jacket and some woven detail like woven collar or woven um, what is it called pocket pocket yes woven simple woven fabric pocket whoops that's not what I wanted to do <laughs> very difficult to talk and do at the same time okay and now I am adding the pocket we'll put it on a pen as well okay the pocket is pretty good maybe too high Okay, it looks nice but also it has the zipper fabric so I need to change it to fleece okay maybe still too high what was that voice okay I think it looks looks cool I like it and now I can um, start explaining about the fleece and how to yeah, make sure that um, certain details are visible. So when it comes to fleece jackets, very often you have these um, um, top stitch on the seams. It's, I think it's called flat lock or something. Um, and I will add it now. Uh, so first of all, I will use the seam line top stitch and add it to the sleeve, um, to the armhole seam and also the shoulder seam. And I will use the top stitch from Close Library, this one. And I want to do it seven millimeter. Maybe I will add some thickness so it's more visible. So basically, this this is kind of the look. Oh, that's nice. Seam line function is finally symmetrical. Oh, that's nice. Okay. So now I've added it, and I also want to add it here, but. Um, First of all, uh, when it comes to fleece, um, I use the first setting. There's another way how you can uh, visualize fleece. You can use displacement map, but very often the look kind of resembles wall paint, like the, that specific type of wall paint. So I don't really like it that much. So I like. Um, using fur for expressing fleece, but of course you can also do it with um, displacement map, but this time I will just talk about the fur setting. And the two details that I will not apply fur to is um, this collar and the pocket. So I will um, make this fabric mat and call it woven. And this and this piece will be woven fabric. And for fleece, I will add the fleece only to the front of the fabric. Um, so as I did layer clone under, you can see that the back side of the fabric is actually um, on the top. So I need to flip normal 
and now it's fixed. So this part will, yeah, this part will be fleece. And first of all, yeah, I will add color and I wanted to do like a green color like this. What's it called? Khaki? Is this called khaki? Maybe not. Ah, olive. It's olive. Yeah. So I, I picked this color, I think. This is actually from the zippers. But it's a nice color. I like it. And then the zipper. This color too. Binding, of course. And for woven. For now, I will keep this too. And for the top stitch, I will use like a contrast color. Yellow. Okay. And now, actually, I want to add this to the collar as well, like this. So now I will set up the fleece um, render. No, fleece setting. <laughs> so front and back, um, side and back, I will change to fabric mat. And front will stay on fur. So the setting here is um, the length. I will do seven millimeters. Thickness I will do two millimeter, and then these I will keep, and this I will put on three hundred. And other settings I will explain while I I'm in render preview. Okay, so now we can move to render. So for checking. Um, checking the fur settings and changing them and finding the best um, best setting I always um, use the small image size for the preview so it's generated quickly and another tip I can give you is to use CPU engine because um, even if you have pretty good graphics card um, of course we always more or less use the GPU to render because it's just very quick um, but when it comes to first setting, I noticed that sometimes when you have a very heavy fur, um, the GPU doesn't even create the preview image. Um, and very often the software crash and you can't even do a render. So this one time I tried to change to CPU and actually it worked. I'm pretty sure there's some smart explanation when it comes to like memory and things like that. Um, but anyway, just a simple solution. If you cannot see the render preview of your fur render, you can change engine to CPU and then um, it might work. Well, I don't promise, but it might work. Okay, so now I will start the render preview. so this is the initial look um, in this case I personally don't really like this look it doesn't really seem too natural and yeah it's much more shiny than I want I want more of a matte look and kind of less dramatic and shiny expression of um, the fleece so what I usually do I remove the glossiness and then once that is removed it does look more matte and another thing that I don't really like is this lighter tone added to some parts so this is um, the setting that is responsible for that so if you put it on zero, there is quite, it uh, generally gets really dark. If you put it on one, then it's really light. So basically to get a very matte look, I put it, put the softness on one or 0 0.9. And then obviously you can see that the color is much lighter. So I have to adjust the color so I have to make it much darker 
and then I also have to adjust the saturation. So that's why it's good to have this um, piece with the actual color so you can more easily um, match it. And then we get a more kind of matte, more calmer look of the fleece. Okay. And then another thing, um, I like to play around with the bend. So obviously if it's on zero, it goes completely up, like straight. But then you see the whole garment looks um, quite exaggerated, like the, um, the shadows are very exaggerated. And I mean, sometimes that can definitely be a look to keep, but that's not the look that I want. So I would add zero bend to 0 0.2. But then when it comes to color, I really want um, the pieces to stand up so that color is really fuzzy. So for that, I just create a copy of the actual fleece, add it to just color and then change bend to zero. And then you can see that the, it stands up very nicely and naturally at the color. But on the body, I prefer that it is um, bending more. Okay. And of course, as you can see, that um, the top stitch is not visible at all. So there are a few ways how to um, adjust this detail. So you can try to use create and use displacement map for the top stitch. Um, but that is not um, a way how I like to do it because it does get a little bit messy and distorted the top stitch so I do it in a different way so it's a little bit maybe more troublesome um, or time-consuming but the detail comes out very nicely so first of all I offset as internal line so the width of my top stitch is seven millimeter, but um, the strip I will make, it will be eight millimeter. And I will show you later why. So I make it one millimeter bigger than the top stitch and cut and sew. And for these pieces, I add fabric that doesn't have for applied and for this fabric I can use the original color okay and the same I will do for shoulder line course once I do it once I cut something the top stitch is gone so I have to reapply the top stitch hmm. well sometimes something like this happens I'm not really sure how to avoid that but one thing that can be quite good is if you do one sewing line like this Also, what you need to do is and for these pieces um, first of all you should remove any curved side geometry because we are adding rendering thickness so I will add four millimeter 
so this will lift up the top stitch and as you can see the top stitch also tends to get really messy so what can be helpful is to reduce particle distance of these pieces so I will put it on too and you, you can see it's really smooth now okay I will just save it just in case because quite often the fur makes the software crash okay and now you can see that the lines are visible more and it is just simply more um, natural look And if you want this um, stitch to be even deeper inside um, the fleece, then uh, you can put a lower additional thickness rendering value to three or two. So basically, this is this is the approach that I really like to use when I create this type of thing. And then the next topic is the pocket. Of course, the pocket was also kind of lost in um in the fleece so one thing you can do is you can cut out the base and add the top stitch fabric to the base and then you can see you don't really have that problem anymore and the good thing is that even though you cut this piece out, because of the fleece you can't really see, so you can keep your um, linked editing in this case. And then I want to add top stitch here as well, so I will offset this line 4 millimeter, well, not extending it. Then I will connect these points join overlapping points and cut and sew okay and now I need to redo um, the sewing a little bit so this I will not sew to this part but I will sew it here and I will add this add the seam line top stitch Well, this is not too great, but I guess there's nothing we can do. And I will also add top stitch fabric to this piece too. A quick simulation. And let's see how it looks in render. looks quite nice so the seams are nicely visible in this case okay so these were basically the main tips that I wanted to share with you and if you want to fine-tune um, the fleece a little bit more oh it's getting slow it's getting slow um, you can also play around with the variance. So here you can create variance of length, thickness, direction, and you can really play play around. And if you change the variance of direction, you can see that the general look becomes a little bit more fuzzy. So it's not just one direction where all the pieces are going. So now it's kind of like a little bit crazy but that creates kind of more natural look of course and then you can also adjust the thickness that creates even more fuzzy look so um, these are the ones that you can really play around and get um, nice visualizations too ok 
okay so this is basically it what I wanted to show you um, I hope some of these tips um, are useful for you in your creative process and um, don't hesitate to let me know if you have any questions or you want to suggest any topic um, or you have any problem with your sub simulations I can also create a video in and show you how to solve some specific problems and um, yeah looking forward to see your creations um, it's now January still very cold in Japan um, so this type of fleece jacket is definitely very handy in this type of weather anyway that doesn't that makes no sense why I said that <laughs> anyway thank you for watching and have a good day bye